The reason there are cracks here is because this, this whole plate was, this whole, all of this was laid down flat in a, in a shallow sea 300 million years ago. And, but you see that these limestone beds are bent. They go up as they go up to, the, to Don Angus and they, they come down into this shallow and then they go up to see the ridge over there. So this whole plate, this whole island has been bent and broken. And as soon as you bend uh, a dense, hard rock, it breaks. But it only breaks in small fractures. And these big fissures are caused by the rainwater coming in with the carbonic acid, dissolving it, and it widens. It's, the water always seeks out the weakest point and, and goes along it. And so you see it, it comes along this fissure right here which is a weak point, and then it, it intersected this one and it took it that way. And then it died out there and you, you can follow that same fissure pattern down to the ocean. Oh. So this, uh, this is where we saw uh, something unusual in this massive gray uh, terrain of limestone. You feel this, it's squishy and slimy. And you feel it push hard enough, and you, you feel the clay in it. Well, there's very little clay, or in, if any, clay in limestone. So this is being created right here in this little depression, a little micro environment that is creating uh, a soil. The other thing we see on this on this terrain is this gray limestone has these boulders on the top that are not limestone, and we go along we see several different kinds and these rocks are called erratics and the, <coughs> the pink one over there is sandstone and this large one right here is uh, a large boulder of granite well there isn't any granite on this island there is granite on the mainland of Ireland so how did this block of granite get here? Well, 18,000 years ago, the uh, glacial, glacial periods were ending, and the glaciers that had swept through all of Europe and Ireland and out to the ocean were melting. Sea level was 300 feet lower than it is today. And as the ice melted, then these rocks were dropped out as the ice melted. It's igneous, and it was created subterranean one. Uh, as it cooled these minerals were were growing and so it's totally different than a sedimentary rock of limestone. So this rock came from the mainland of Ireland and was deposited when the glaciers uh, retreated and melted. And if you look this is a, a hand lens and you, you focus it like this and you can see in the fresh areas, you can see where, uh, see the different grains in there? There are different minerals. There's quartz, feldspar, plagi clays, not too much mica. But, so this is a, a granite. So many grains in this. <coughs> so many grains, that's right. And here's another piece of an erratic. And this, this one was a gray, lime, uh, gray sandstone, and you can see Bring it closer there. There you go. Yep. And you can see how fine grained that material is. And uh, Jen, if you would hand me that rock behind you. Yes. It's still another type of rock. This is a coarser grained sandstone. Uh, and you can look in it and see the, the many different rock fragments and, and minerals that were weathered from a from a granite and deposited in a sedimentary rock. And this, so this is another type of sandstone yep. that is in this terrain that is all limestone. So that's where these uh, erratics came from. And it's part of the story of, of the uh, history of, of glaciers that really was not understood until uh, a theory of the Ice Age was to, was published in 1849. Uh, they were still assuming or 
using a biblical origin of the great flood for these erratics until it was clearly uh, seen from the pattern of deposition that, that they weren't laid down by water. They dropped out of, out of glaciers. So we'll walk on down the field here. We'll walk across here and look at some more. Now we'll go over and look at the, some more of this terrain and see what other features we can define. More erratics here. Now, you notice this fracture of these, these crevices in the, in the limestone, and these are, are naturally occurring fractures. And if you look at the, the walls that are man-made, they're made of this rectangular shaped limestone that was created by natural fractures. And you see that at the surface, these fractures which in the subsurface below this, the rock that's still buried, the, fr the fractures are microscopic. But they come to the surface and rainwater mixed with CO2 in the atmosphere creates carbonic acid and that acid dissolves the limestone. And that's why you have these irregular surfaces on the limestone. That's not a depositional feature. That's from chemical erosion of the calcium carbonate. And some layers are more resistant than others. And so therefore, you get this, this very sharp and unusual ero uh, erosional pattern. It's not, uh, it's not the normal surface of the rock. It's, yeah, it's a chemical, uh, chemical reaction of the rainwater with carbonic acid and the limestone. And you see the fractures are, are horizontal. They, they, they occur in an in a, uh, orthogonal pattern. They're, they have let right angles. And you see the wall rock that's man-made. Well, they picked up those rocks and, and so they made a nice uh, naturally occurring building block and we see that all over the island. And something that we've learned on this trip with, uh, you know, the Inishmore is only 27 square miles. Oh. The whole, but it has 7,000 miles of walls, man-made. Wow. One stone at a time. Those take ages. Take a long time. So we'll come down here and look at some of the features. Be careful on these. Some of them get quick get quite sharp. As we make our way across this field, we'll go to the, uh, the wormhole, pulling the best. Now something we can, something we can see from here, and don't, don't step where the grass is, because sometimes they're just holes. So if you look on the far cliff, uh, just below Don Angus, the fortress, that black layer you see is shale. Now it was laid down in the ocean. It wasn't deposited like the, the little microenvironment we saw there. This was laid down in a very uh, oxygen deprived uh, ocean and that's why all the organic material remains and it's black shale. And as soon as you start putting shale, which is a clay mineral made up of clay minerals, into a clear ocean, the carbonate the deposition stops, and so you get 100% shale. And you'll see that uh, those layers can actually be correlated to this same rock, the same Mississippian age rock over in North America. So at one time, these continents were together, and you can map these same units as, as in, into America and Canada. Is that Pangea or Pangea? Pangea, mm hmm and Gondwanalan, and when the, the Pangea was, when it was all one, and then uh, and it wasn't until uh, the 1970s uh, when the uh, theory of plate tectonics was, was uh, accepted as a fact. Uh, early in the 1900s, uh, Dr. Wagner had developed something called continental drift, and he did that just by taking the, the continent, maps of the continent, and putting them together like a puzzle, and he said, well, they all fit. You know, you can look at Africa and South America and just put the maps together and they fit. Well, they actually did spread from a uh, mid-ocean ridge 
that is still moving today and the plates are still all moving around the, the surface of the earth. Do they move by much each year? Or? Not, well, it depends. Uh, some of the plates in the Caribbean move uh, a centimeter a year, yeah, oh. centimeter, which may not seem like much, but is very rapid movement in geologic time. And our, uh, Australia moves quite rapidly, and uh, Antarctica is staying pretty, pretty stable down there at the South Pole. Uh, North America is f fairly stable boundary. Uh, however, there's something called the Ring of Fire that goes all around the Pacific Ocean, where those are all very active plates, and volcanoes occur there. And in the Caribbean, you see ring, uh, these island arcs that were created by volcanoes, and that's where two plates collide. So that's the plate tectonics. We can, we can map the movement now using satellite geodetic surveys. down from the ridge just above the wall and down into this opening. We're looking at this naturally occurring ridge and it's, uh, believe it or not, would be uh, considered a beach ridge. Now where you went swimming, the Kilvaney, the sand, a little fine, very fine grained sand, yeah. well that's there because it's in a certain energy environment. The waves are gentle enough that it just moves sand. Well this this beach ridge was created during the storm of uh, 2013, uh, 20 and 2014, January, February 2014. And so those would be, are deposited by wave action, just as the sand grains are. So you have to consider, just think about how much force the waves have to have to move boulders the size of automobiles Ooh. into a beach ridge. And when I was here, in 2013, that was not there. That was an open area. There actually was a ramp down to a, a carrick ramp that uh, fishermen used to use. And now it's all covered with these giant boulders. Oh. So the force of those storms is tremendous. You you had those storms in, in Ireland, you remember? Yeah. Yeah. Were the waves really, really big then to be able to throw them the whole way over? Right. So they just brought them all into here. Mm -hmm. So oh. as these, these cliffs eventually erode, and drop large blocks of limestone into the ocean, well, the waves eventually rework even something the size of a, of a car or a refrigerator. It takes a wow. lot of force to do that. Yeah. Okay, well, we'll go on to Polnadesh. Oh.